Hey, welcome back to another part of my Angular 2 tutorial series. In this part, I want to focus on something which I kind of have touched in some of my previous videos or especially in my what the fuck are components, data flow and so on video, which is not actually a part of this tutorial series. And that is why I wanted to get back to that topic in this video, inputs and outputs. So ways to pass data from one component to another, because it really is a core concept in Angular 2. And outputs is something we haven't touched in this tutorial series. And we could also refer to them as custom events, how we write custom events, which we can then trigger or fire in our application and catch in some component and pass data with those com uh, this events. So I think that's, that's quite an important part of any Angular 2 app because it's a part which will allow us to let data flow up in the hierarchy of components instead of only from top to bottom. So very important concept. Let's get into it. So I prepared a new app here. And by the way, very important, the source code for this tutorial series is now available on GitHub. You'll find a link in the description below. And there I will have two branches at the moment. Uh, one for the app as we have built it until now in all the past videos. And now for this video, I created a new branch because I don't really need my contact list app, which was already getting a bit cluttered with the HTTP and pipe stuff. So I wanted to start fresh and don't have that messy first page where we really focus on one part. So therefore, at the moment, two branches, as I said, uh, one for the past and one for this video. And I know I don't have my GitHub repo at the moment uh, in a state where I would have the source code for each video in, in the state it was in this video, but it's more the, the latest source code. But still, you should be able to follow my thoughts a little bit clearer there, maybe if there are some issues or some topics you're not sure. And you should also be able to, to read the code in case you had problems with that in the videos, uh, even though I'm now always taking care about the font size, or at least try. So, here, brand new application where I got a parent component and a child component nested inside it. And now let's think how can we pass data which we enter here in the parent component here to our child component. Well, this actually is very easy and something we already did a lot. So I'll not talk too much about that. We'll use an input in our child, um, which will allow us to use property binding on our child component here in our app component uh, to pass in a value to our child. So let's do that. I'll first go into my child component here and I will create a new property here, which I will just call parent value. And this parent value will be a string. Then I will create an input here, or I use the inputs metadata, which takes an array to specify that parent value will be a input which can be bound to this child component. And as I always said, this value has to match this value, and that then has to match the value I use here, my app component, where I use squared brackets parent value. So the same name as in my child component. And I pass whatever value I want to pass. So in this case, whatever I enter in, into my input field here. So let me just assign a local variable here, parent input. And then I can pass parent input dot value. And now to actually update the UI so that Angular 2 updates the UI, I will have to bind a kind of a dummy event to my input field here, where I say on every key up, yeah, basically do nothing. That is why I set the action to, to null, <laughs> to zero. It, it doesn't do anything on key up, but it triggers a, a UI update. So that's working. And now let me go back to my child component here. And here I just want to use string interpolation to output parent, oops, parent value. Now let's try if this works. Yeah, seems seems to work pretty 
fine here. Good. Now, actually, I don't need the click me button here at all uh, in, in my parent component, at least. So let me get rid of this. So this is how we bind it to our uh, to our child component. Now, I want to have the same thing here, right? If I enter something here, it would be great if this would then update it here in my parent component. So let me go to my child component, get rid of the button too, don't need it. And then I want to find a way, yeah, to, to basically have the same behavior I have from parent to child up from child to parent, right? Now I can't use input. If I try to specify inputs here on my parent component, and say like child value and then I have here my property called child child value which would also be a string and then I have my string interpolation here child value okay so then I, I get my inputs here or this should be a string by the way so I got this set up and in my child component I would have like uh, here my input field, a local variable, child input, and also on key up, do nothing. Um, yeah, how do we now pass it? Because my app component, I was able to use property binding squared brackets to access my, to, to pass it to my child component. But now I don't have the possibility because, well, I don't have my parent component here. I can't bind to it, right? So we will have to find another way. And what we will use is an output, an output. Because from parent to child, we can use an input. We pass something into our child. And now we want to get something back from our child to our parent. And that is why, that is why we use an output. We're getting something out of our child. That's the way to think about it. Putting something in, getting something out. So we need an output. Now, let me get rid of this input here at my parent component. We're not doing anything there. And my child component, I'll create an outputs or add the outputs metadata, which is also an array where I will have, yeah, you know, let's say I call this, well, this will be an event kind of to put it that way. This will fire and then I want to um, catch it in my parent component. So I will just set it to the name child changed. So uh, event styled name. Um, this will be a custom event we'll create here and an event we will have to fire by ourselves. And therefore we use the event emitter. So we have to import it from our Angular 2 core package here too. And now I can create a property child changed which is a new event emitter and this event will pass a string therefore this is a generic type I will set it to type string and what I can do now is when this changes here on key up I'm not executing a, a dummy function or I'm not setting that to zero instead I'll execute a on change method which I will create here my child on change and here I will get the, the current, let's say, the value of my input passed into it. So I'll pass my child input dot value into this method. And here I can do, it's very easy. I'll execute or I'll access my child change property. So my custom event, and I call the emit function on it. Emit is a function defined in my event emitter. And this will basically fire the event. And I can pass whatever value I want to pass. In this case, just the value of my input field. So this fires the event. And in my app component, I can now uh, go to my child component where I'm currently binding my parent input. And I will catch this event by using parentheses like we always do when we're using events, just that key up is a built-in event and now we're catching our child changed event which isn't built in but defined by ourselves and now what I want to do 
if a child changed, uh, is, is catched or is fired in my child and now catched here in my parent, well, I want to execute uh, a function and I can just do the following. I can just set child value equals event. Dollar sign event, that's very important. Don't forget the dollar sign. That is the, uh, the argument Angular 2 will use to, to, to store the data we're passing through our custom event. So this name is not something we, we, can, we can change or we can choose here. It's just given. The value we enter here when we emit an event, this value will always be accessible through dollar sign event. Don't forget this. So dollar sign event stores the value we enter into our input field. And then we just set it to child value, which is the property we defined here. So really, really simple in the end. Now let's try this. I again enter something in my parent component. This works, we saw that before. And now I will enter something in my child component. And as you can see, this worked too. And this is all the magic that is to it. This is how we can pass data from the parent to the child and back from the child to the parent. And more importantly, or equally importantly, this is how we define custom events and how we fire them. And now obviously custom events can be used for much more than just transferring some strings. If we enter something in the input field in our child component, we can use custom events to yeah, basically react on all kinds of things that might change and that we want to um, catch in another component, which will be updated depending on the change in another component, right? So maybe a bit complicated, but in the end, just as I said, think of it like, think of it like this. Custom events are outputs, our way to get something out of a component. So something is emitted by the component and inputs are something to, uh, to transfer it into the component. That is the core that is to it. And now one more thing I want to show you. In my child component, I got this parent value and I got this child changed here. Now, if we say, okay, parent value is the name of the property we want to use in our child component, but maybe it doesn't feel right to use parent value here because we are in the parent. Maybe you want to call this like, let's say just, just, um, pass value or, or any other name doesn't really matter. So let's call, call it pass, pass value. Don't know if that's better, but just for the sake of this exercise, we want to use pass value here, but we want to keep parent value here. Very easy to do. We just use a colon here and we specify the alias, which is used for our input. So if we save this and test it again, it still works even though we're using past value here instead of parent value. And this is because I'm setting a, an alias with my colon here, uh, which says, okay, it is the property parent value in this component, but it is accessed through my alias past value in other components. Now, obviously the same would be possible for output. You could specify an alias the same way here. Another way to specify an output would, by the way, be that. Don't use the outputs metadata here, just use add output here. But in this case, uh, I don't know colon, but uh, parentheses. In this case, you will have to, um, to import it. So you will have to import output from Angular to core. And now it still works. Oops. It still works, but um, now we got the output here. So whatever way you, spe you prefer, this way I guess you pretty fast see which property is bound to, 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 an, to an output or which property is an input or an event. Using it this way, you don't have to use all that metadata here uh, or those decorators here. So it's really up to you. Both ways work. Currently, I don't know of any best practice that is out there. So you're free to use whatever you like. See you in the next video. Bye.